16th, and they're hot. They've won seven of their last eight, stand eight and two in the ACC. They'll line up with Evans, Walker, Wilkes, Gray, and Osborne. No Tall order to start with, and it became even taller without Audis Tony. Tony yes. out with an injury. He is uh, a very tough, competitive player. He may be the one guy that the Panthers absolutely can't afford to lose, and they've lost him, at least for today. Man to man for the Panthers, and again, their identity has to be toughness on the defensive end. Walker rimming a three, and the first rebound of the game belongs to Kulambali. Here comes Pitt, coming off a loss to the Wolf back at midweek. Inside Champagne gets the basket and the whistle. And that's exactly what the Pitt Panthers need to do. Justin Champagne doing a great job getting position on the inside. Pretty good ball movement by the Panthers. You don't want to be dribbling the ball around. A nice screen by Horton and Champagne. He's he's a guy. He goes out beyond the three-point arc, but he's better inside. Showed you some strength right there, finishing through that contact. Champagne missing the free throw and the chance at the three-point play. Evans and the Knowles turn it over. Coming three on one. Missed opportunity that time by Sabande. Well, Sabande, uh, going just a little too quickly, he's a transfer from Miami of Ohio, and he was a big scorer at Miami of Ohio and hasn't put up those kind of numbers for the Panthers. They could use his offensive support today. Evans on the handoff to Gray, and he nearly turned it over, got it back. Evans fires. And this is tipped to Champagne. So far, the Panthers doing a great job on the defensive boards. Plus, they've limited Florida State to the outside jump shot. Johnson with a great crossover, but shot it too strong off the glass. I think he was worried about Wilkes trying to take the charge. A head fake and drive by Wilkes. Back up top to Evans. Wilkes for three from the corner, and that's off the mark. Out of bounds to Pitt. One of the things that Florida State does, Bob, when they're really operating is they're attacking, and it looks to me like early in this game, they're settling for some outside jump shots. All three of Leonard Hamilton's field goal attempts so far. His teams have been three-pointers. They've missed all three. Xavier Johnson works off the high screen, drives it, kicks it. Champagne. He's been struggling with that three-point shot of late. On the run out. Evans inside, lays it in. Oh, I beg your pardon, that's Osborne laying it in. And that's, that's the kind of thing that Florida State does very effectively when they're playing well. You push the ball up the court, Malik Osborne runs very, very well. You've got to reward him, and they did that time. This one is out of bounds and belongs to the Knowles. Here are the Ford keys to the game. Brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Bob, for the Seminoles, they need to attack aggressively on both ends of the court. They need to pressure the Panthers, force them into some tough spots defensively. And for the Panthers, they got to get some stops, and they've got to make some shots. It's a really simple formula for them, things they haven't been doing very well in recent games. With Juan Gray using that big body to get the offensive stick back. 6'8", 260. The redshirt junior making it a 4-2 Florida State lead. Johnson directs at the point. Shot clock under 10. Johnson got the guys in the air, and that's all it took. He'll be headed to the foul line. That little up fake got two defenders airborne. Uh, Bob, and if that's a really hard thing to defend against, this is Osborne. And if he jumps straight up in the air, he's fine because that's a situation where Johnson actually jumped a little bit into him. But uh, if the defender jumps toward the offensive player, that foul's always going to go against the defender. First point of the afternoon for Xavier Johnson. As Bosch, Capravicha. 
comes in for Florida State. Well, Kopravica is, he's the guy who starts a lot of the games. I think they were looking for a little more quickness with Osborne, but Florida State, they play nine guys. Uh, they've got nine guys who play 15 minutes or more. First touch for Barnes on the wing. Walker tried to feed it inside, and again, the Knowles turn it for a second time. And what an athletic block by Scotty Barnes. My goodness. <laughs> Oh, Nike Sabandi thought that he was ahead of the pack. But Scotty Barnes really came from out of nowhere. Boy, that's really a nice play from Barnes. Barnes just tracked him. Entry pass finds Horton inside the three-point ring. And the rebound to the Seminoles. Polite in the game, gets the first board. And the corner three for Barnes is off the mark. To the Panthers, I think you'd like to push it when you have the opportunity, but you don't want to play against that seminal set defense any more than you have to, but I don't think you want to get in a track meet with Florida State. And that ends a drought of five missed shots in a row. And boy, if, if I could, can come up with some offense today, Dan, that would be a huge boost for Pitt. Well, so far, Florida State seems content to stay out beyond the three-point arc. And we said Nike Sabandi was a big scorer at Miami of Ohio. There's and, a travel. Yes. On Johnson. Stops the clock at 15.41 to go in the first half. Pitt with an early two-point lead. ACC Hoops is brought to you. 19 threes on the year, and 12 of them he made in three games. So in the other 14 games for the season, he's only made a total of seven three-point baskets. So as we said, that's not the strength of his game, but his game has been solid all year long. Barnes and a hold in the rebound action on Pitts Terrell Brown. And that's a really good move by Scotty Barnes, just taking the ball and attacking the basket. Barnes, of course, at six feet nine, operating against Xavier Johnson at six feet three. It's really remarkable story. Barnes, a power forward in high school, comes into ACC competition as the Knowles point guard. It's been amazing how well he has adjusted. And ties the game at six. Panthers had an opportunity to get that defensive rebound, just couldn't control it. It bounced around, and Raquan Evans ended up with the ball in his hands. Really tough if you give Florida State those kinds of opportunities. Osborne now has a couple of buckets. Johnson gets the ball up top. X with a side saddle runner in the lane. That's a tough shot. Johnson can make tough shots, but I think you want to keep those to a minimum if you can. Barnes. And the rebound, Champagny. And we showed you those numbers, averaging over 18 points and 11 rebounds a game. Long bomb by Horton. That's Horton's game, though, Bob. The catch-and-shoot three. I think the Panthers are fine with that shot. Calhoun. Barnes gets in the paint. Polite kicks it. Open Springer by Calhoun. When you give Calhoun any time at all in that catch-and-shoot situation, he's the guy in that Virginia game. When Virginia was making a run at him in the second half, he hit a big three. He's done an outstanding job. 46% outside the arc. 9-6 FSU. Here is Johnson. Stumbles, but completes the pass. The wing three is an air ball. Here comes Polite, leading a three on two. Lobs it, and the stuff by Valsha. Kopravica did a nice job. He pressured the three-point shot, and then he didn't go to try to get the rebound because he was already out. How'd he and, get in? And injured, <laughs> and injured his shoulder, but he's better now, and uh, you, you're seeing it here. Points hard to come by for the Panthers lately. Last four possessions are over three with a turnover. They've gone without a point for two and a half minutes. 
This is Odukali out front. So has the big man with him. Yeah, but what a nice job by Kopravica to move his feet. Six seconds to shoot. The dish and a foul with one on the shot clock. Kopravica's first. Free throws coming up for Pitts, Skolabali. And as he lines up the first free throw, we'll duck in a quick word from our friends at Works Lawn Bar. Works Landroid Robotic Lawn Mower. Available at MyLandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. A 76% free throw shooter. Koulibaly is a guy that I think has to score for Pitt to be effective. They can't rely simply on their big three, particularly not with Tony out of the game with an injury today. So somebody's going to have to pick up the offensive slack. Man to man for the Panthers. Evans feeds it right back inside to the big fella and he puts it in. Raekwon Evans has such great vision as a point guard for Florida State. He knows where everybody is. He knows where everybody's going. He knows where, where the ball is supposed to go. Koprovica just slides to the basket. The defense isn't there in time to help. Evans out of a double team makes an easy pass. But again, Balsa Koprovica showing you that he can move very effectively. Nice catch in traffic. The seven foot one sophomore leaves the free throw short. He's got a couple of dunks for four. Florida State leads it 13 8. On the handoff, Jeffers, who picked up the foul last time down the floor, now gives it. And the jump shot is good by Odakali. Got to try to get the ball in the hands of Champagny in an offensive situation a little bit more. And a drive right through the defense by Evans. I expect Evans to pass the ball, and uh, lots of times he does drive to pass, but that time he went all the way. 15-10, FSU. And Benny was behind the defense. Now he gets it right in the heart of the lane. Ball never hit the rim. Three on the shot clock. And a push on Florida State. This will be charged to Evans. Putting on quite a show for us. And they are to be thanked. 15 to 10, Florida State. Bob, early in the game, we mentioned that Florida State was settling for some three-point shots. Not anymore. The Seminoles going inside, dominating the points on the interior, 12 to 2. They're 6 of 11 shooting from three-point range. The one thing about that foul that bought Pitt, the 20-second reset of the shot clock, that helped, but they could not convert. And a steal on the wing by Johnson. Two on two come the Panthers. Johnson behind his back. And it's out of bounds. Now, well, let's see. I think we may have better information. And the ball will belong to Pitt. But Johnson is so dangerous in the half court. And Raekwon Gray is telling the official, I never touched it. That's one of those we'd have a five-minute review if it was in the last two minutes of the game. <laughs> That's what just Only five? <laughs> they give it to the Panthers. 15-10. There's a pickoff by Calhoun. He'll take it up and jam with two hands, and the Knowles have hit their last five shots. Champagny jumped when he got into the double team to make the pass. You've got to keep your feet because Calhoun was just laying in the weeds there waiting for that. Once Champagny got up in the air, he had to throw the ball. Johnson. Feeds into the corner, and stepping out of bounds was Odukali. That's the fourth bit turn. When Champagny jumps up in the air, he's stuck. And Calhoun was just waiting for him, and uh, Florida State really, <laughs> they're, real, they're really rolling now. 
And, and one of the things, Bob, we saw before the game from the Seminoles, they really seem to be enthusiastic yes. about being here. Just going to say that. The second they walked in the building and came out to, there's a travel. When they came out to warm up, I mean, they were making noise, jumping around, and really excited to play. Not that Pitt wasn't excited to play, but Florida State came out and they were demonstrative. 17-10. Well, Bob, interestingly enough, if you didn't look at the scoreboard, you'd think that Florida State has a much bigger lead. So the Panthers, even though it's been a struggle, they're hanging in there. Rebound, Calhoun. Boy, the size of Florida State, I think, has really bothered the Panthers. And we have a foul on the inside, Gulabali. <laughs> If it's his first. But Tenor Engom in there, the big guy, seven feet two. And it wouldn't be a Florida State team under Leonard Hamilton without at least one seven foot two guy to go along with another seven foot guy. But Engom really did a nice job getting position, forcing Koulibaly into that foul. Walker. <laughs> Rebound Horton. 17-10. Pittsburgh trailing. Johnson, nothing doing. Barnes takes it up and in and a foul. Boy, Florida State, Dan, just comes at you in waves. Well, Bob, that wasn't a wave right there. That was a Scotty Barnes. And yeah. Barnes did a wonderful job. Not only does he move his feet and prevent Johnson from driving to the basket, when Johnson backs up, Barnes goes right after him and blocks the shot. That is a tremendous defensive effort on a couple of levels, and then he turns it into a basket. A three-point play. His first points of the afternoon, 20-10 to 10, Florida State. Bob, Scotty Barnes has shown throughout the season that he can really help Florida State even if he never scores a point. Well, his size, his length, and athleticism. There he is taking a, trying to take a charge in the lane. That was a great reaction by Justin Champagny to not commit the charge. He jumped straight up in the air. Again, it's dangerous to jump up in the air to pass. Denied is Gray. Johnson picks up the loose ball. Champagny will follow it in. It's almost like Champagny threw that one up on the board like you do on the playground sometimes and go get it yourself. Barnes with a floater. No runs and underneath for the jam. Wow. And Gom ready to catch it and Barnes with an outstanding pass. Well, you'd think that a seven foot two guy underneath the basket would draw some defensive attention, but the Panthers a little confused that time and Barnes made him pay for it. What a wonderful pass. Horton off the bounce. And hustling to take that rebound away. Great job by Sabandi. Moves in, moves out. Long three is good by Ethel Horton. Well, Horton again, he's better as a catch and shoot three point guy, but that time there was no defender close and he had time to load it up. That pulls Pitt within five at 22 17. Walker at the top. Pulled out of the air by Champagny. I think Sabandi blocked that. Champagny, a little give and go. Lays it in. What a play. You know, this is a heck of a bounce pass right there. And Champagny shows you his strength as he's going to catch the ball here going through traffic. I don't know how he caught that ball. That was a really good play to pick that ball up in traffic and then play through the contact again. Justin with six points so far. He's got four boards. Half the line. And nails the free throw. So Pitt with a nice run here to cut it to two, 22-20. 10 to two, Pitt spurt. Again, Panthers without Adis Tony out with an injury, doing a nice job hanging in here. Go, 
Evans to the wing. Wilkes. Now they work the baseline. Gray inside. Panthers in a zone, and Florida State just did a nice job getting the ball inside, penetrating that zone with a pass, and then the good pass from the high post to the low post. So Bandy switched against the big, takes the long kick oh. three and hits it. His second three of the game. Hits within one. MJ Walker. Evans. On the bounce. Wilkes a long three. That's good. Wow, that was a long three. I'm sitting here watching, thinking, okay, they've got to get the ball inside. They can't just throw it around the perimeter. Well, all Wilkes did was back up four or five steps beyond the defense. Boy, that was a long shot. Second, 7 0 3, 27-23. And we have a timeout. 6.39 to play in the opening half. Barnes with a beautiful no look inside to Engom. And at the end of the league, with the rep that he had coming in, he's the biggest recruit in terms of the five stars and all of that that Leonard Hamilton has attracted to Tallahassee. But the culture that Coach Hamilton has created, and this one is going to go off gray out of bounds. The culture that Leonard has created, you know, Barnes just fits in seamlessly. Well, Barnes fits in seamlessly, and the other thing that they do at Florida State is they recruit guys who are going to fit in. They know what they want, and they're able to get them, and they do a great job developing players. We were talking about Anthony Polite. You know, Raekwon Gray is another perfect example. Raekwon Evans, these guys, they, they bide their time in the program. They put in the work. And an awful lot of that, you've got to give an awful lot of credit for that to Leonard Hamilton and just the way he builds the team. Obviously, the young men get most of the credit because they're the ones who do the work. But Champagne shoots an air ball. There's Taken down by Wilkes. There's something to be said for the atmosphere that Leonard Hamilton is able to create. And a foul on the drive. This would go on Horton. And that's his first. It's interesting, Dan, this year the Knowles have had eight different players lead the team in scoring. Last year, nine different players led the team in scoring. Talk about a team concept and sharing the glory. <laughs> and, Bob, because of that, you get an awful, you don't get an awful lot of hype for Florida State players for postseason honors. You know, mm -hmm. nobody's talking about other Florida, I mean, they're, they're an outstanding team, but you know, and nobody's really talking about, uh, okay, does Florida State have somebody who might be the ACC player of the year? Who are the Florida State first-team All-ACC guys? You just don't hear that very much. And that's because they've got nine guys who play 15 minutes. They share the basketball. All they want to do is win. And they are doing that with a great degree of regularity. 29-23. Off the glass and the jam follow for Champagny. Again, I think Johnson bothered by the size, but he drew the size to him, so nobody was available to block out Champagny. And that is a big mistake, Indy. He's the one guy out there you got to go get. Inside, nice spin and jam. Gopravica now, the dunking machine. He's got six. 31 25. Well, there's very little at six feet four that Nike Sabandi is going to be able to do against the 7 1 guy except steal the ball. And he tried, he just missed it. 31 25 FSU. Champagne goes in and rolls it in softly with the left hand. Reaches double figures with 11. Where around the basket he can be so effective. Gray. Nice use of the glass. Bob, you mentioned Gray at 260 pounds. That's what he weighed last year, but in the offseason, he did a great job readjusting and reworking his body. To He still weighs 260 pounds, but it's all muscle now. Last year, he stepped on the scale one foot, and it was 260. This year, two feet, and it's all muscle. Odakali, nice. 
pretty good rhythm offensively for Pitt right now. They're doing a nice job, Bob, even though that they, they there have been times when they've been bothered by the size. They keep attacking the basket. Polite. They go back over the top. Wilkes doubled. Shot clock at 10. And talking about taking it away from the seven footer, nearly a turnover. Here comes Wilkes out of the corner, and he drains another one. Wyatt Wilkes, second three. And he's limping a bit. And he goes right off the floor to the FSU sideline. <laughs> Bob, I, I didn't really see what happened. He made that jump shot. That, that doesn't look like an ankle issue. No. That was a really nice job by Florida State hanging in there, moving the basketball. And Wilkes, that's, that's what you call a shooter. He waits until he's sure the ball has gone in the basket, and then he starts grimacing. <laughs> Pitt did a pretty good defensive job that last series. Florida State just did a better offensive job. Tipped. And it's out of bounds. This will belong to Florida State. A timeout in Pittsburgh. 347. First half, Knowles by seven. One of the better three-point shooting nights on the road that Florida State has enjoyed as a, a team in three ACC road games, 31%. And they've made their last two. They started slowly, but they've made their last two. Polite. No, lost the dribble, went off his knee out of bounds. And they didn't do it that time, obviously, Bob. But one of the things that Florida State's able to do here, they're trying to apply defensive pressure. But with they, when they shoot the ball so well, they apply offensive pressure as well. Fifth turnover. Florida State averages 13 and a half turns a game. Here's the bandit. Nice little crossover. At the end of the clock, the rebound to Osborne. Uh, the only problem is Pitt got no movement at all on that particular possession. Here's Barnes. Draws the double pass. and another terrific feed. It's out to Pitt. Well, Engom, he, he put that ball, Barnes did, in exactly the place that he had to put it. Engom just couldn't handle it. The, after Angum caught the ball, he couldn't handle getting the ball up to the basket in traffic, but that was a marvelous pass. Champagny on the reverse and drew the contact. I thought Champagny was gotten away with a push-off against Barnes early in the play, but then he comes back with the basketball and is going to go to the foul line. Well, he's thinking about dunking the ball, but Engom changes his mind. And I think if you're the Panthers, you just have to keep attacking and attacking. You can't worry about that size. And now a quick word from our friends at Coyote Tractor. Not a single tractor ever been built that's better equipped to do the dirty work. Coyote, we dig dirt. Justin Champagny on the line for Pitt. And the Panthers cut it to five at 36-31. Bob, I'm really impressed with the way the Panthers are hanging in. Missing 14 and a half points from their lineup with that injury to Tony. And gone. That's a great play by Polite. Maintaining his composure, pivoting, and stepping through that double team to find Engom. How many dunks does Florida State have today? They got six. <laughs> How many did you have at Virginia? Well, Bob, remember when I was at Virginia, you weren't allowed to dunk. 
<laughs> Just thought I'd ask, you know. Not everybody remembers those days like you and I. Here's a rebound in the lane, taken down by Pitt. The Panthers are down seven. That's a nice how many, jump. How many would you have had? Oh, many. <laughs> Too strong. Off the glass by Champagny. Barnes. Picked off by Champagny. On the break. Johnson. Bob Johnson was looking for a foul on that play. I thought he could have taken the ball right to the basket. Florida State's going to take a timeout with 108 to go in the half, leading by seven. Well, a couple of tough breaks. Criminals of Florida State. Seven point lead. But Pitt has hung in for most of this first half, and you don't want to let the Seminoles get away from you here in this last minute. Spinning in is Walker, giving it back. Shot clock is at five. Gray will shoot two. Sabandi with his first foul. As Sabandi reached in as uh, Gray was driving by. I thought that Champagny was in pretty good defensive position. Seven points. But Raekwon Gray had 15 in the Monday win over Virginia. Five boards, three assists. His seventh straight game in double figures. That's a career best. Champagny the rebound. 39-31. Oh, look at what Gray just did. Amazing. And then missed the little finger roll left-hander. But it's out of bounds to the Seminoles. Well, the defensive pressure from Florida State at times today in this first half has been outstanding. Well, the problem here is Xavier Johnson is trying to hold off a 260-pound guy. And you just can't do that. And Gray does a great job without fouling, knocking the ball away. Off the fingertips of Horton. Again, Raekwon Gray, 6 feet 8, 260 pounds. He missed that layup, but that was a marvelous defensive play. Ten to shoot. A little staggered screen action. Gives it to Gray. Little runner on the baseline. No. Champagne's got it. Eight seconds, seven. Justin bringing it down. Gives it up. Here's the jumper by Okadali, and it's good. Okadali with his third field goal, and he's got six. And a big bucket for Pitt to cut it to six at halftime. Bob, I thought that was a huge basket for the Pitt Panthers. They've hung in there the entire first half, and to draw it up within six at halftime, I think is pretty impressive. With 13 points, he collected seven rebounds. So Bandy had six, so did Kali had six. And Pitt will get the basketball to start, half number two. Nike Sabandi also had five rebounds in that first half, Bob. So you know, you're talking about what they're going to do to make up for the loss of Adis Tony, and I think Nike Sabandi has stepped in very nicely. Good to see Wyatt Wilkes back in after a little knee discomfort late in that first half. Seminoles are running. Evans down the lane. A miss by Osborne, but he'll go to the foul line. Osborne scored four points early in the game, Bob. Four points, three rebounds, and then played only ten minutes. But again, Florida State just runs guys at you. Second foul on Koulibaly. Osborne missing the first of two. He's an 86% free throw shooter coming in at 18 of 21 for the season. And he's been pretty consistently scoring the ball for Florida State. Double figures in four of his last seven. A six-point Florida State lead.
Now make it seven at 40-33, and a bit of pressure in the backcourt applied by MJ Walker. Johnson methodically getting fit into its offense. He'll drive it, kick it. Champagne goes into the paint, dumps it down low, and then the ball is stuck. Our first wedgie of the day. Uh, and that's a, they're going to rule that a held ball, and so Florida State is going to get the possession, but that was some pass by Justin Champagne. But what great defensive reaction by the Seminoles. We have mentioned it so often, not only today, but all season about the Florida State balance. In that first half, it just seemed like everybody got a couple of rebounds, everybody got a couple of baskets, a turnover here. In the lane, Gulabali trying to get a shot off, now gets rid of it. The drive, and one. Nicely done by Sabandi. Bob, I thought that's what Sabandi should have done the first time. He dumped the ball off to Koulibaly, and he, Koulibaly was in big trouble. But then Koulibaly's able to get it out. Nice little touch pass by Horton. And again, Nike Sabanda, he scored in double figures 76 times during his career at Miami. Scored more than 1,400 points. So this is a guy who can put points on the board. Became eligible in midseason, and this is out of bounds to Pitt. Well, Bob, he became eligible when the NCAA decided that everybody was eligible. Pitts down only five. Now Horton will bring it out front and give it to Johnson. Shot clock at 10 for Pitt. Horton. And this ball belongs to Pitt. I think Florida State has done a nice job for the most part today, Bob, staying close to Horton. We mentioned Horton is a catch-and-shoot three guy, and they have been very close to him for the most part every time he's caught the ball. A cross-court pass finds him, and Horton's runner is good. And Pitts within three. Wilkes speeds it inside. Osborne going up strong and scores it. And again, FSU right into the heart of the paint. Bob, that's a play right there where if you're Koulibaly, you have to decide if you're going to really go hard after the block or you're going to let him go. You just can't move your body into him like that. If you're going to commit a foul there, you have to make sure that your opponent can't get the ball up on the board. Stay tuned for the fast break presented by your local Ford dealer. Eight points for Osborne, 43-37, Florida State. Johnson gets in, gets it up and in. Exactly. Boy, that was some laying. Well, it's some laying. Bobby takes an awful lot of contact, but Xavier Johnson, 6'3", 200 pounds. That's just quickness to get in there and then strength to get the ball up to the basket. Johnson's first field goal, and he finishes it, it all off with the free throw for the three-point play and again, Pitt. Comes right back to cut it to three. Well, Bob, you have to ask yourself, how can Pitt be within three points in this game without Audis Tony, and with that being the first basket for Xavier Johnson? Again, I, I think it's been a team effort by Pitt, and it's been team toughness as much as anything else. The entry pass to Evans. Oh. And a 
Another cheap foul up top on Terrell Brown. Well, there's just there's just no reason to do that. Your your job there, if you're the post player, Bob, is to jump out and to just make that offensive player move to give your your guard a chance to catch up. I mean, there's, that's just that's just a giveaway foul right there. Third team foul on Pitt. And a whistle and another foul on the Panthers, and this won't be on Johnson. His second. Another illustration of Raquan Evans and his ability to just know. Dave Odom once told me that to be a good basketball player, you just had to know when to pass, when to dribble, and when to shoot. And absolutely, uh, Raquan Gray <laughs> seems to fit the bill right there. Of course, it helps when you make some of those shots. Jeff Capel and his Pitt Panthers up by, uh, down rather by four as Evans puts in the second shot. Scotty Barnes comes in for Raekwon Evans. Now, Barnes in the first half, Bob, was only one for six, but he made a couple of really nice defensive plays, blocked some shots, nice passes, and was a factor defensively. Johnson looking to get into the paint. Horton puts it up. Mid-ranger is short. That's what you want to do. You make you drive Horton off that three-point line. Wilkes. And this is going to go out to Pittsburgh. Really impressive how active Malik Osborne has been early in the second half. He tipped that ball out of bounds, but he almost had an offensive rebound. Femi Udakali coming back for Pittsburgh. Osborne, the redshirt junior. And Osborne at 6'9", 225 pounds, he's the smallest of the FSU big guys. He's going out of the game now, and he gives you really quick defensive reactions and activity, and now they change the pace on you. They put Bosa Koprovica in the game. Seven feet one, 240. And a kick by Barnes. I think if you're Horton, you have to place yourself in a position to receive that pass. He just stood there. You need to step out so that Barnes can't kick that ball. Champagne now Odegaard. Here's Horton. Draws a lot of attention inside Champagne. No, but he'll shoot two free throws. That's a really good job by Champagne to just turn and attack. Yeah, he's got the seven-footer there. Xavier Johnson was wide open in the corner, and Oda Callen missed him. Koprovica with his second. Now Champagne. Two free throws to come. Recruited out of Brooklyn, New York. His twin brother. Plays at St. John's Julian. Assistant Plays. coach Tim O'Toole took a recruiting visit back to New York. Said, I like this guy. Got Jeff Capel interested. And Justin fell in love with Pitt. Forty-five, forty-two. A foul. That's really good defensive pressure by Oda Cali. Sort of pushes him there and then just shoves him out of the way. And all Oda Cali does is just stay in the way. Sometimes it's not making some fabulous play, it's just making an easy play, and that's what Oda Cali did. Knocked out. Shot clock at 17 for the Panthers. That's a tough pass. 
just too many of those long arms to try to get that one through. Mm -hmm. A bullet cross court, rising up but missing the jump shot. Sabade and FSU the other way. There he takes that dribble, gets closer to the basket, but then has to shoot it over Scotty Barnes. And a, here comes Gray, kind of like a tight end coming down the lane. And we've got a timeout with 15.59 to play in the game. See that revolving door on the Florida State bench. You look at the stats, Dan, it's incredible. The leading scorer is Osborne with eight. And the rebounding is distributed. The high guy is Gray with four, but everybody's got at least two. <laughs> well, the two of the big guns, uh, Walker and Polite, haven't scored. Forty-seven, forty-two, And Raekwon Gray is just a guy, he just keeps playing. Uh, you know, he, he lets the game come to him. He doesn't force anything. And a block. Roper beats a... Nailing it at one end. And the lay is good at the other. And a nice job by Polite to play through the contact. Bob, how many times have we seen that guys really being physical on the inside? But there's a perfect example of Florida State, what they do best. You get the block shot, and then you run the ball up the court. And we said Polite, he didn't have a field goal until that play. But this is just a really nice job. He freezes Justin Champagne with just that little shoulder fake and then goes right to the goal. Free throw missed. 16 fouls on Pitt. Seven point ball game. And if you're the Panthers, you've got to stay close. You can't allow Florida State to get any run going. Champ Benny missing. Gray the rebound. Barnes weaves his way through the traffic, puts up an air ball. Big comes back with Horton. The follow, no, but a foul on FSU. Nice job by Terrell Brown from the Panthers to run the court on that play. You know, Horton seems to be struggling with his confidence a little bit. You'll take that shot every time you can get it from a shooter like Horton. He just didn't put it in the goal. But nice job by Terrell Brown getting your big guy running the court like that. Very effective against NC State. Had seven boards, three blocks, and... A season-high 25 minutes. Koprovica has to exit with his third foul. No, so just bring in another seven-foot guy. That's right. And Gob returns. Second shot. Good. Six-point ball game. Barnes completes the pass. Panthers drop back into their zone. Orange fires it up front. Nicely off the glass by Gray. That was a fabulous move. <laughs> Under control. And Dan, you made the point earlier about how Florida State has been doing a nice job attacking the pit zone. And the good hands overplay the passing lane. Gray missed the jam. He's a little too far away for that. And the fire by Sabandi. No. Brown saves. Back to Johnson. Kansas has had a couple of open shots, Bob, that they've missed. Don't want to just pound the ball, though. And after the release, a foul. I think they're going to get Calhoun. It is Calhoun, his first. And free throws for Pittsburgh. Bob, you pound the ball like that with the dribble. Even when you do the step back, he had two guys flying at him. So he's got a break. Uh, Odakali's going to get to the line and get a couple of free throws. And these are points that the Panthers badly need. 
just get the idea that Florida State might be ready to seize control of the game. So if you're Pitt, you do everything you can right now just to hang in there. And lane violation is going to buy Odakali a reprieve. Well, Engom sort of fell into the lane. <laughs> Second shot for Femi. And this one drops in. 51-45. Pitt sets up the press. Coming back to relieve the pressure is Calhoun. Now he's doubled. Knowles played around the perimeter. Polite and a running out of runway there on the baseline. Turns it over. Pitt running. Johnson with the left hand scored. Boy, good decision by Johnson in transition. Looked like it was a two on one, but Calhoun got back very quickly. And Johnson was able to get the ball all the way to the goal. 51-47. Okay, the Panthers did respond, Bob. And reading that pass was Brown accurately to knock it out of bounds. That's a really good job by Brown. He was playing behind Engom, and when that ball was in the air, he stepped around. He didn't try to push against Engom. He stepped around, and as a result, he's able to tip the ball away without the foul. That's really good footwork by Terrell Brown. Polite. Rebound Gray. Right, the big fella again makes an impact. He's up to 13 points. 53-47. Well, he had himself matched up against Xavier Johnson in that rebound situation, and that's the definition of a mismatch. Champagne, right to the front of the rim. Champagne is so active. He just keeps moving without the ball and finding open spots. That's a really aggressive play he made, John Bob, just by stepping to the goal. Kind of a wild shot there by Evans. Bit down by four. And they can, oh, the bad pass goes bouncing out of bounds, and the ball belongs to the Seminoles. Now, that's, that's the kind of turnover that has been killing the Panthers, and they haven't made that kind of a turnover today. Their first turnover of the second half, and just their second of the game. But I think that was the situation, Bob, where Justin Champagne thought Xavier Johnson was just going to take the ball to the basket, and Johnson just stopped, and I think he surprised Champagne. Who had to, who had stopped? <laughs> there was no way. <laughs> Not good to fake out your teammates. 53-49. Eight minutes of a lapse in the second half. Barnes kicks it back out. Here's Walker giving it up. Again, the Seminoles, good ball movement. Barnes says, I'll take it. And follows his own miss. <laughs> As Barnes was the one guy, Bob, who re-jumped in there. Everybody else just stood flat-footed. Terrell Brown went for the block, and the other player, pit players stood there and watched. Gordon feeds Champagne. Up and off. And the rebound controlled by Osborne. You're just used to Champagne making those tough shots, so you're surprised when he misses one, but that's a tough one. Barnes going up strong. Contact and a foul on Pitt. And with that, a timeout. 11-10 to play. Justin Champagne doing more good work inside for Pitt. Well, Bob, there's only two schools in the conference that haven't had a COVID pause. One is Miami and the other is Notre Dame. Now, they have had games postponed because some of their opponents have had COVID pauses. But this is something that obviously has affected more than just basketball. It's affected 
people all around the world, and hopefully, if we all work together, we'll get through it. Two free throws for Scotty Barnes, 57 to 49. All right, and this is where the game, Bob, has sort of operated from Florida State ahead eight, and then Pitt cuts into it, makes it four or three. Then Florida State stretches it back out a little bit. So let's see if the Panthers can hang close. The jumper by Horton doesn't go, but the loose ball picked up, and the stick back by Koulibaly. That's just good hands by Koulibaly, not giving up on it. That's a basket the Panthers, I think, sorely needed. 57-51. Again, attacking the zone. They get it into the middle and gray. Shot clock at five. Evans, follow, Osborne, looking and foul. And boy, that's so tough for Pitt. They played such good D. They got the first miss, but could not secure the rebound. Bob, lots of times when you're playing in a zone, particularly with your team like Pitt, you're not a zone team. You're really a man-to-man -man team. And that was a very aggressive zone defense. But the Florida State passing, you want to know why you move the ball? You move the ball because that moves the defense. And whether you're in a zone or man-to-man, -man, if you move the defense around, it makes it an awful lot harder for the defense to block out. So that was just great ball movement by Florida State. And Raekwon Gray and Malik Osborne were in the middle of the whole thing. Terrell Brown coming in. Second shot for Osborne is good. And the Seminoles continue to cash in at the free throw line. Eight-point game. Overall, the Seminoles are 14 of 18. At the stripe, 78%. Oda Kali with a little 16-footer. Offensive rebound for Pitt. Let's see if they can get that second-chance basket here. Well, that time, Brown got the rebound, but the Panthers sort of weren't in position to take advantage by... Lots of times you get that offensive rebound, you can kick it out and get a three, but the Panthers sort of weren't in the right spots. Evans. Now in the middle to Barnes. Scotty with a little baby hook. Second shot, good. That's the second time, Bob, in the last couple of possessions where Barnes has gotten the ball inside, missed, gotten his own rebound, and put it back in. Those are good players. They just keep coming at you, and eventually they wear you down. Yes, the cumulative effect of all these big bodies, the size, the length, and the pressure that they apply does take its toll. Sabandi out front. And remember, Pitt has, is playing without Audis Tony, and that certainly doesn't help. Chan Benny going to challenge the seven-footer. A foul. This may go against Gray for a reach in. No, it's going to be the block on Kopravica that will be his fourth personal. Champagny thought about trying to take the three, and I thought he made a good decision because Kopravica, <laughs> it'd be hard to shoot that three over top of him. But Champagny got his attention with the fake and then it was able to drive by. If Justin Champagny goes on to win the uh, conference scoring and rebounding championship, he will be the 11th in the history of the ACC to do so. Some famous names down through the years in this conference. And Champagny would add his name to that. Barnes going up and oh. in and out. Well, Bob, not only what you're talking about is 11 guys to do it, averaging a double-double. Correct. Yeah, well, many have done both, but to do it with double-figure rebounds is quite impressive. Nice duck in. Count the basket. Boy, and that was against Malik Osborne. Osborne, six feet nine, and Sabandi did a great job with his pivot foot. Of course, that's not Osborne. Excuse me, that's Raekwon Gray. 
But it doesn't make any difference, or Raekwon Evans, that doesn't make any difference. Sabandi used his body very well to hold off the defender and then used that pivot foot to get the ball to the goal. Big free throw here. Right 18 left, and he hits it. 61-54. So again, the Panthers fall down, and they, they have a response. Gray. Again, gets his own missed. He was hit. Talk about strength. Gray comes up with his offensive rebound and then being held with the left arm in the basket anyway. And the officials looked at the play. Nothing came of that elbow. And a common foul was called to put Gray on the line for an and one. Free throw is good. Solid at that line, 80%. 64-54, Florida State. Under eight to play. Johnson. Rudy Colley kicks it out. Horton's three, offline. Rebound Osborne. Bob, I think Horton has been affected a little bit by these Florida State guys flying at him. Horton, one of five on threes and two for 12 for the day. Barnes hands it over. Here's MJ Walker's three. And that bounces out. We've got a foul coming on FSU. This will go on Gray, and it will be his second. Bob, we talked about the game Nike Sabandi has had. He's got 11 points. Now he's got six rebounds, and he just he just outfought Raekwon Gray for that ball. This is a one and one. Every free throw opportunity precious for Pittsburgh. Trailing by nine with 7-10 remaining. We're kind of at that point in the game, Dan. Don't you think that Pitt can't trade baskets? They've, they've got to get some stops and a big opportunity here as Sabandi gets the free throw miss. Bob, they've got to get some stops, but they also have to score. There's been a couple of times when they've gotten those stops and haven't been able to convert. Champagny, nope. Now, Champagny trying to take that on himself. That was a tough play. And we got the foul. Charge to Sabandi. That's just a great job by Malik Osborne running the floor. <laughs> But again, Florida State just stays after you. They just keep the pressure on. They get the rebound, and off they go. Two free throws coming for Malik Osborne. Five of six today. You see that outstanding free throw number. And as this season gets into the final home stretch... Osborne becoming a reliable double-figure scorer for the Seminoles. Now, that's how you can go on the road and have M.J. Walker not score any points. Pitt now facing the zone. Yeah, but you think you're open, and then these long guys come flying <laughs> at you. Little push shot for Johnson. And I think that's what the Panthers have to do. You've got to get inside that zone, and you can't be worried about the shot blockers. You have to attack. Barnes pushed off. That'll be his third. So again, an opportunity here. Well, Bob, this is what you're talking about. They've, they've got to stop right there. Nice job by Odakali to move his feet. 
So they got to stop. Now you have to make the basket. The bandy will drive it. Miss it. Seven holes have it up the floor to Barnes. Cross court to Gray. Bob, he got all the way to the basket, but that was a very tough shot. He's trying to shoot over Raekwon Gray. Nice defense to pressure that shot without fouling. Osborne sports it out. The drive and a foul, a block on Pittsburgh. It has been a very aggressive take it to the basket approach by the Seminoles, and it gets dividends for Evans. Third foul on Xavier Johnson. A 6'4 senior. Also outstanding at the line. Changes as Wilkes comes in. Kaprovica comes back. Ten point Florida State lead. Back iron but kept alive. Now Pitt secures it. And the pressure shifts to the Pittsburgh offense. Johnson with a bullet inside Champagne and a crowd. And the Knowles just take it right away. Bobby, had Champagne been able to catch that ball on the initial pass, I think he scores easily. Barnes loses the handle. Champagne saves it, but right to Wilkes from the corner. Calhoun misses. And again, Barnes just fingertips it to keep it alive. Boy, Barnes is so active on the offensive boards. <laughs> And one of the problems for the defense is they're guarding him with a backcourt player, and the backcourt players just aren't used to having to block people out. Cobra beats him, missing it, rolling it off the rim. It remains a 10-point game. So there's your stop, Bob, but the Panthers are running out of time here to make some shots. Johnson gives it up. Odakali throws it all alone underneath is Horton. Boy, great recognition by Pitt to find Horton on the backside. That cuts it to eight and a timeout on the floor. Come up with a way to score efficiently here in the last four minutes and 19 seconds, and that's very difficult to do against Florida State. Well, there's no question. Florida State's defense has been solid all day, and the Panthers, their defense has been pretty good as well, but they just they can't get the ball to go in the basket at key parts. Now they're looking for another stop. Freshman Scotty Barnes out front. Defended by Xavier Johnson. A double team on the ball. Now Barnes pops free on the wing. Wilkes, polite, and a huge three for Florida State. Bob, that's a great play by Wilkes to pass the ball. Keep in mind that Wilkes is shooting over 50% from three-point range in his last couple of games, but he passed up that shot. Johnson equalizes it with a three of his own. Jeff Capel wants his guys to pressure, but that's exactly the point you were talking about, Bob. You can't trade baskets at this point if you're the Panthers. Barnes moves in, a little wraparound pass, and the dunk for Koprovica. 72-62. Knocked away. Active hands and a hell ball. Arrow to Pitt. Just that relentless pursuit of the basketball inside. Led by Wyatt Wilkes. Now, that's the situation. I, I'm not sure that Koulibaly was really expecting this pass. And then if you don't shoot the ball immediately, suddenly you're surrounded. There's four black shirts around him. Wilkes, it looked like he touched that ball when he was out of bounds. Not this play, the replay. <laughs> well, on this play, he did, Bob. He got the ball, he was out of bounds. A 10-point Florida State lead. As the great Baseball Hall of Fame manager Earl Weaver would say, 
as the lay-in is good. Florida State has deep depth. They just sub in. It's like a hockey line change. They come jumping over the boards with three or four fresh guys. And fresh guys who can play. They just keep the pressure on you. They wear you down. 72-64. Florida State using much of the shot clock here. We're down to 2.30 to play. Here's Barnes all the way to the hole to jam it. Bob, you can use a lot of the shot clock when you got a guy at the end of the shot clock who can do something like that. What a finish. Inside, nice scoop to the hoop. Better tip in, though, by Champagne. Boy, that was some catch. <laughs> by Koulibaly, he just wasn't able to finish. A 19-point, 10-rebound double-double for Champagne. And Bobby, you get the idea that he's earned every one of them yes. against this Florida State outfit. Walker, tip pass. And it's out of bounds. Yeah, Raekwon Gray was out of bounds when the ball yeah. touched him. So, Pitt down by eight here. Only a minute 38 remaining, but they've got an opportunity, but they have to score. They have to score quickly. Yep, they got to go quick. And it's, it's hard to do against this Florida State defense. Champagne flicks it up there, but we'll go to the line, and he comes away limping. Boy, that's the last thing Pitt can afford is Justin Champagne to be limping. And you see playing with that knee brace. Came down awkwardly. Bang knees. Uh, here he is at the foul line. And hits the first one. See the Panthers with what they've done. Pretty much on track today. 74-67. And he gets them both. 74-68 with 126. Full court press by Pitt. Polite brings it up the wing on Horton. Now you got to go for steals here, Bob. You can't worry about whether or not you foul. You have to try to steal the ball. And here's Leonard Hamilton trusting the ball handling in this particular situation to his 6'8", 260-pound guy. Walker. And the rebound to Johnson. Pulls a three ball. And gets it. Now, he was on the line, Bob, and the officials are going to stop it right now. But Tony Henderson underneath the basket thought the, his foot was on the line, and I agree with him. He, it was on the line. So it will be 74 to 70. Pushes up that right foot, just hits the line. But, Dan, that's exactly what you were talking about. Come down, be decisive, go quickly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's unfortunate that his foot was on the line, but that's exactly the kind of shot that he needed to take and, in this particular situation, make. So the blue line, of course, is the men's three-point line, and that score is going to be reduced by one on the pit side. You'll see it here. Uh, I think his foot was on the line, Bob, but, boy, is that close. Wow, is that close. It is judged a two-point field goal. But that was looks closer on the replay than I thought it did live. You know, our vantage point here in the Peterson Event Center, we're basically right on that three-point line. And the official coming from the back, Burt Smith, he thought that he was behind. He couldn't see his feet, and Tony Henderson underneath the basket did. Nice job by the officials to get it. Yes. Get the call. And uh, get the correct call. And adjudicate it quickly. Yes. Yeah, thank heavens. <laughs> <laughs> so.
So 74-70. Bob, Bob, you're in the same situation now. You've got to get the ball, and it doesn't matter how you do it. Walker. And there's the foul on Xavier Johnson. And that will be his fourth. Both teams in the double bonus. And Raekwon Evans will be stepping up. That's not the guy you really want to foul. And you notice, Bob, at this point in the game, Scotty Barnes isn't out there. And that's because Scotty Barnes, Scotty Barnes is, you know, he's not a terrible free throw shooter. He shoots 63%, but he's the worst one of oh, the yeah. options Leonard and Hamilton has. And what an advantage that will be for Florida State come tournament time. When you've got just great foul shooter after great foul shooter, you're not worried about who's handling the basketball down the stretch. So there's too much dribbling here. you got to get the ball and you got to shoot it. And a great save on the end line by Florida State's Osborne. How did he do that? <laughs> he had to pass it around his own guy to get the ball inbounds. What great balance. Well, earlier in this second half, we saw a magnificent end of the shot clock dunk by Scotty Barnes. Now, Bob, and this was, at, this was at a point where they're trying to run down the clock. Pitt still has a chance in the game, and they get it all the way down to a couple of seconds, and then Barnes does that. Our turning point presented by Coyote Tractor. Evans. And the Seminoles up by seven. A day they had 12 dunks. That, that one by Barnes, though, was pretty special. Nice drive. Timeout pit. That cuts it back to five at 77-72. Carolina game is such a huge game for the Tar Heels. 77-72 here. Florida State ball with 11.9 remaining. And the foul committed at 10.8. Uh, nice job by Florida State to get the ball into their best free throw shooter. I mean, time and time again, mm -hmm. when Pitt has been forced to foul, they've had to foul this guy. The 6'4 senior. But I like the fact that Florida State wins games in different types of ways. You know, not every game against the better opponents as they get ready for the tournament you know, is going to be a walk in the park. You're going to oh, face no. all kinds of defensive pressure, a slow game, an up-tempo game, and they can win both ways. Very impressive. Bobby, the interesting thing is they, they scored that big win they had against Virginia. They scored 81 points. And this game was a much more grinder, physical type of game, and yet they have 79 points. They've done a great job at the line, hitting 23 of 29. Champagne missing. Rebound, Florida State. And that is going to do it. The final horn, Florida State. Number 16 improves to 13 and 3, 9 and 2 in the conference as Leonard Hamilton and the Knowles come to Pittsburgh and win by seven.